Late Night Health continues. I'm Mark Allen, along with the insane Daryl Wayne. During the next 10 minutes or so, we're going to spend some time with our friend, Dr. Linda Salvin. Uh, Linda's been on the show before. She is a renowned psychic. Many people don't know that her background, her a lot of her education is ep- in epidemiology. So she's kind of an expert in something called COVID-19. Linda, welcome back to Late Night Health. I really look forward to our conversation because we're going to kind of take your psychic energies and your science background and kind of blend them. Is COVID-19... Hi, That's Hi there. Too. Thank you. Go ahead. Is COVID-19 as bad as we think it is? Scientifically, yes. Spiritually, no. And that's where there is a conflict. It's everybody on the planet because I see that there's more mistruth and guidance creating fear and control versus the actual mutation of a viral infection because other viruses don't do this. We've never shut down the world, let alone a country and a city. So on a spiritual level, I can see that there's two things. We're going through a major transformation on a personal level within ourselves to dig deep on the past and grow and get rid of old ideas and feelings. And on a planetary level, the new wave of spiritual growth, love, and acceptance is coming in. I call it the hallway of transformation. Back to the science, there are infections, there are illnesses, there is transmission, yes. The average person who appears to get sick, and unfortunately some that pass away, are already living with a compromised immune system. So there's a lot more involved than what we're hearing in mainstream media, but I don't want to misguide and say no any more than I'm going to say yes, but I have been able to meet it in the middle. Well, when I go to the market or when I go out, I wear a mask. Uh, I wash my hands. And you do too. Okay, good. I know Daryl and I have talked. Daryl does as well uh, when you're in the market. Uh, Daryl, well, you're, because you uh, want to prevent up? you from becoming more exposed from them. You don't know the cashier's exposures, or her family, or the guy behind you, or guy in front of you, or touching the the machine to get your credit card in. I mean, you don't know what's out in the line if you're buying meat and fish and cookies. You don't know what's in there. You have to protect yourself. Absolutely, and I think that's that's important. I have some friends who had the uh, who had COVID. And uh, he was in his, he's in his 60s. He and his wife are okay. But as his wife was being released from the hospital, she had a stroke. All of this oh brought on, of course, because she had one, a compromised immune system. And two, yep. um, uh, the, the COVID just, you know, ravaged her, 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 her body and her respiratory uh, tract. We have to do two things, I think. We have to say, hey, maybe this is a time for a wake-up call. Where, If you look online, there are many, many different programs for us to you know, clear our mind, get straight, um, even just do things like cl- spending time to clean up your office. Associated Press put out an article, and I called it about um, the, the COVID-19, my opinion, and it was really this spiritual transformation. So, yes, it's a time to clean out old files in your computer or the closet or clothes you don't wear and give to the needy and those that have lost their jobs. There's 40 million people out of un, out, out of work. They need what we don't need. It's a time for spiritual and emotional cleansing and growth. It's a time to take more responsibility on your physical health. It's a time for responsibility. And because there's so many conspiracy theories and changes going on in the government and CDC and NIH and who, everybody's so confused because nothing is in order. Everybody's got a different as, opinion. As somebody, as somebody who worked uh, in the field of epidemiology, yes. are, are we handling this from a scientific basis? No. Correctly? No. What, I believe what not. What should we I do? I believe part of it. 
is scientific, but unfortunately, and I don't want to name names, but there are certain leaders and powers that be that fight the scientific data that has the suggested methodology for a faster healing. So if you look at different countries, China's almost healthy, but then I, now they just had the plague unfold. But Italy has survived. Austria, Australia has very few cases. We have the most in the world. Something's wrong with how we as a country are handling it versus the rest of the world when you look statistically. You go overall, and the death count is really no more than the average flu on an annual basis. And the other thing, I personally know somebody in radio that broke his wrist. They defined it on the insurance as COVID. So there's a lot of mislabeling to boost numbers, and your audience may or may not know that the people who um, diagnose COVID get $13,000 from the government or Medicare, and those that reported death get 39000 So again, you got the money behind it on top of the science, on top of the healing, on top of the health, on top of the life. It's complicated. And that's not how Yeah, you it is it. complicated. I mean, you know, uh, washing, what kind of soap? Do you use dish soap? Do you use antibacterial soap? Nobody's ever announced. I use antibacterial and I use dish soap. And I don't get hung up on my hands being infected. I mean, after the gas station and touching the pump or going to the market, yes, I will cleanse. But I'm not getting obsessive, which is what they're saying. Wash your hands, wash your hands. They're pushing, in my opinion, a little too much. We know what to do to take care I would wear a mask before I wash my hands, but if I'm going to put my hands to my face, then I have a problem. Because right. you want to prevent. It's about prevention. Well, one of the things that, that, that I I do is I wear gloves when I'm getting gas, disposable gloves, and when, yeah. I, when I use my credit card to buy something, uh, I rinse it off with, you know, antibacterial... Uh, Good. Uh, a gel. Well, the virus can't live that long on plastic or metal or a hard surface. They're finding it, it, it doesn't work that way. And in my opinion, some of it's exaggerated, which caused even the theory of, oh, my God, we're going to run out of toilet paper. There was no, no one ever mentioned <laughs> my toilet paper was associated to the virus, except we were going to be locked down and couldn't go to the market. So it, it's the pieces of the puzzle make a different puzzle. It's not quite done yet. But the thing that people upset me about is they've made it a partisan issue. You can't say disease is partisan. You can say it's demographic. It may be economically skewed. It may be racially skewed. Demographics is not politics. And that's what well, I the, the whole thing practical. shouldn't be politics. We want to be common. healthy. Right. We, 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 we don't want to be part. I don't think it should be partisan. I think the idea is that the government should be there to protect the people to get rid of this thing as quickly as possible. I saw uh, yesterday on the news that there's a vaccine that they're actually testing and they've they've tested it on several hundred people. And the, these people have developed antibodies for the COVID vaccine, uh, for COVID-19. Right, it's coming out of Oxford. I, I know, I, I, I heard it. It's coming out of England, and the right. first inoculation may not be as strong as the second, and the only side effects are headaches, nausea, maybe diarrhea. It's still new. But then you've got the other side, if you really dig deep, vaccines for COVID were um, patented in 2004. They're making it look like this is something brand new, which it's not. There's a big Linda, we're out of Linda, on. we're out of time. If somebody is interested in finding out more about what you're up to now, L I N D A S A L V as in Victor, I N dot com, or they can call toll free triple eight five zero nine ten seventy seven. Got you, Linda. Thank you. We're out of time. I got to go. I'm Mark Allen, along with the insane Daryl Wayne. We'll be back.
Late Night Health is proud of our partnership with the EBC, the Evolutionary Business Council. Check them out at ebcouncil.com. You're listening to Late Night Health with Mark Allen. The show continues in a moment. Recently, I met Jacqueline from Bright here in Los Angeles. She gave me a hearing exam and then showed me how to hear again with the new Signia Pure Series hearing aids, and she can give you your life back, too. I hear birds chirping, birds cooing, and even my wife. They easily connect to my smartphone. The Signia hearing aids are amazing, and with the charge and go, I don't have to fiddle with batteries and hear all day long. Not hearing is frustrating for you and your family. I know, you don't have a problem, but trust me, call Bright here now for a free hearing exam, a $125 value, yours free, just for making an appointment now. There are offices throughout the Los Angeles area. Call Bright here now at 323-424-7100. That's 323-424-7100 for a free hearing exam. There's no obligation. Call now, 323-424-7100, or visit them on the web at brighthear.com. The latest from the greatest, the best in new music by classic rockers, with your host, the insane Daryl Wayne. This is Alice Cooper, and if Daryl Wayne is insane, what does that make me? Criminally insane. Stick around to find out. Many of the artist interviews for the latest from the greatest have been captured on audiobook. There is a volume one and volume two. Great information and conversations with people in the industry and people surrounded by the industry and of course the rock stars themselves. I'm the Reverend Al Green and you're listening to the insane Daryl Wayne and I said Wayne Insane. You can find it on Amazon or Blackstone Audio. Search for the latest from the greatest from Daryl Wayne, D-A-R-R-E-L-L-W-A-Y-N-E. Hello, this is Weird Al Yankovic and you're listening to the insane Daryl Wayne, aren't you? (laughs) Welcome to Guide to the Soul. This is Robert Clancy. When your life's problems seem to rise and fall like the waves on a stormy ocean, let hope become your life raft and faith become your paddle. Every sea touches a calm shoreline somewhere in the world, and eventually this storm that you're going through will pass too. Never allow negative circumstances to define you. Whatever happens to you in life may be faded and it certainly can't be changed after the fact. What you can change is how you feel about it and how you're going to let it affect you. Today is a brand new day, and as with any gift, share it with love and gratitude. For more inspiration from Robert Clancy, visit GuideToTheSoul.com or go to the Moments with Robert page on LateNightHealth.com. Late Night Health continues. I'm Mark Allen, along with the insane Daryl Wayne. We welcome uh, back to our airwaves, uh, as we do each and every week, our regular contributor, Robert Clancy, the author of The Messenger, amongst other books. Robert, today we're going to talk about being different. Tell us about that. Yeah, so my inspirational thought is uh, you can only truly be different by being yourself, and you need to celebrate those differences, and it was really, uh, you know, you can't really be anyone else but yourself, and you might as well be unique, and if you're not living your truth, you're not being yourself, you're you're not putting yourself out there as uh, the person that you are, you're not really uh, fulfilling why you're here. I got an email uh, earlier today um, saying, take this course to find out what your purpose is. Is that related to being different, being unique? It it's definitely goes hand in hand with it because your purpose of whatever you're here, your unique talent, your unique abilities, um, what you contribute to the world are part of your purpose. And then living that truth and being yourself which actually makes you different because everyone is unique. It, they're unique as the fingerprints that we have, and that's really what you leave behind 
just like a fingerprint is your legacy and leaving that beautiful legacy that can help people long after you're gone. Is that important to have a legacy after you're gone? I think then, you know, you're definitely fulfilling your life purpose if you're doing some type of legacy, leaving something a little better than uh, than it was when you got here. And, yeah, there are people that are helping others that have been dead for hundreds of years because of their legacy, because of what they contributed, what they left behind. And, you, you know, your whole life is not about what you're going to leave behind. It's about creating that life that actually does leave something behind. And I can think of a number of people. Martin Luther King would be one. Uh, uh, Mozart and his music inspires people. That kind of uniqueness. Yeah, and you don't have to be famous to do that either. You just have to, you know, somebody said that each person, each of us, you, have a unique talent. You are better at something than anyone else on this entire planet. And whatever that is, you need to exploit it for the greater good of humanity. And that's sort of what a superhero is. They always come down to having that one thing that sets them aside, and somehow they use it for the greater good. But how do you find out what that your your uniqueness is? I mean, there are thousands of insurance agents. You're saying that one of those insurance agents may be the best insurance agent in the world? Uh, they're probably, yes, I would say so. And, and George Carlin once said that, you know, there, there's also the worst doctor in the world and somebody has an appointment with them tomorrow. <laughs> 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 That's the scary part, you know. <laughs> right. Well, and then a lot of doctors think they are the best in the world. Um, that's they learn well, that in medical school. Definitely they striving think. to be yes, and uh, what they can do, and they go into that field um, not just for the almighty dollar, but to actually help other people. And that's why I, you know, that's I think helping other people is the most important thing that anybody can do. Yeah, absolutely, that's, and that's really what the definition of a hero is: it's somebody that actually goes out there and does try to make some difference. And you can do that, you know, in mass, or even if you make a difference in one person's life, I think that's also important. Yeah, just the, the simple gestures of uh, sharing something that brightens someone's day, and it doesn't have to be some big gesture either. And those, those are all parts of sharing yourself and what makes you different in, in that sharing. How do, how do you approach somebody or do you approach somebody who is self-centered uh, they they don't share with others unless there's something back for them do you try to break their that that chain of of self rather than us well first I look at it that what's the assumption that's being made there so you have to look inward to yourself why you would assume that that person's like that and then uh, also you got to take into account a lot of different factors that are going on in their life at that time that may make them appear that way so I try to look at it on all sides before I make some kind of judgment on someone and really to look at the big picture of giving them that space or the benefit of the doubt in that moment and obviously if someone's consistently doing that then you may need to evaluate how that person fits into your life but if it's a it's a moment to moment thing sometimes and we've all experienced things like that and we've all done them uh, a number of years ago I think we did a, a segment on the show where we talked about how to extricate those people from your life those who are negative uh, who take energy if you will uh, I call them energy vampires uh, and that might be something to look into uh, as as you know you're you're being different you you run into these people who are 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 just all about themselves yeah and there there's you know ways to release with love in that in that instance and that's part of it um, you know today it's really about celebrating the differences that we have and how you can be unique in that in that formula and really what sets you aside and really looking at that is is the key to moving forward especially in, in these times you know where 
we have a lot of social isolation going. It's just, um, it's been, you know, on up and down, you know, and people are getting depressed out there and other things, uh, you know, from being isolated. So if you look at your difference and how you can be creative with that, and, you know, I was at the uh, airport, so uh, I went up to the uh, to the security checkpoint and you have your mask on, and then I guess you have to take your mask down to show them your ID and those things. And I pulled it down, and the woman that was there, and I said, hey, I'm smiling. <laughs> and then she looked up, and she started laughing, and she goes, I haven't seen too many of those. <laughs> but it frightened her day, and that's just something that you can do just to surprise someone, you know. And it's, um, you know, standing in line at uh, at a Starbucks. And even now, uh, I try to, when I when I go out, when I'm at a, a coffee place or uh, or picking something up I try to be happy and and friendly um, I think I, I I may have mentioned that I was in in a market a few weeks ago and a woman bumped into into my cart and was apologetic and I said you know don't worry about it it's fine and I said I'm smiling under this and she laughed um, I think being light and and happy is what what we all need you know uh, what's that song uh, um, it was a coke commercial I want to make remember it Daryl there have been several I'd like to teach the world to sing was the big one that's it that's the big one that's the one I was thinking about uh, I'd like to teach the world to sing in three part harmony anyway new seekers I think that, what was that the new seekers Yes, is the name of the group. I knew I knew somebody was a sister of one of the one of the uh, members of that group. I think anyway. Um, Robert, thank you very much. Um, uh, if somebody's interested in uh, finding more about Robert, where should they go? Robert Clancy uh, to guide to the soul dot com. So it's a guide and then t o t h e s o u l Guide to the Soul. Guide to the Soul.com. And of course, Robert's books include uh, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Soul and The Messenger, amongst uh, a book of poetry and other things. Is, uh, uh, lots of information there. Uh, and on Facebook, uh, you can find him, and there's lots of stuff going on there. He posts uh, almost every day. And um, uh, lots of great information. Well, this wraps up this edition of Late Night Health. Thank you, Daryl, as always. And thank you for tuning in. Whoops, sorry about that. Go ahead, Daryl. My pleasure. And thank you for tuning in. Everybody, have a great week. Have a good week. And most importantly, have a healthy week. We'll see you next time. Bye bye for now. Sometimes it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Words are a critical aspect of success. How you get your point across is a crucial part of what makes anything sell. So do it right and hire a writer. Whether it's articles, blog posts, technical writings, website content, product descriptions, or ghost writing anything from a novel to a nonfiction book about your navel, contact Servette Hassan. If you want it to sell, write it right. Email Servette at Servette at Servette Hassan.com.